we did the Dutch test and he was incredibly stressed out. And I said, you know, and I said, look, you know, you're just, you're fasting too long. He was fasting like more than 16, 8. I can't remember exactly what it was. And he was like, oh my God, I've been fasting like a bastard all these years. And all I've been doing is piling on the weight. <laughs> and literally, go. as soon as we started ha- him having breakfast, that it lit, the weight just came off without any real yeah. kind of effort in a way. Welcome to the Wellness Breakdown, where we examine the latest health trends and we discuss how lifestyle and nutrition can truly change the way you live. I'm Eve Kalinic. I'm a nutritional therapist, author and consultant. And I'm Rose Ferguson. I'm a functional medicine practitioner and also an author. Yeah, we haven't always been in this game. Rose spent most of her youth on international catwalks as one of the most iconic 90s supermodels about that but Eve had a very hectic career as a fashion PR so we've definitely been there we've done it and there is no room here to preach yeah this isn't one of those waggy fingers should do podcasts we're here to dig into some of the wellness trends figure out whether some of this stuff is just nonsense and give our personal and professional opinions on some of it it amazes me that the global wellness industry is now worth over five trillion dollars So before you go out spending your hard-earned cash on the latest new thing, make sure you listen to The Wellness Breakdown first. The Wellness Breakdown is sponsored by Ancient and Brave, a mission-driven wellness brand with an award-winning range of collagen, MCT oil and nootropic blends. From supporting menopausal symptoms to supercharging your energy, Ancient and Brave's products are pure, potent and easy to make part of your daily morning or wellness ritual. Personally, I find the true collagen really easy to take and I normally add it into my morning coffee, which is a habit that I already already have ingrained. I'm never going to miss my morning coffee (laughs) and it's definitely a way to maintain consistency. Yes, well, I love collagen too um, and I've been using Ancient Ray for a very long time and I do use it with clients. I use it for myself. Um, I do actually love the cacao blends. I love the collagen one with cacao. Delicious. Yeah, and what really sets them apart is their sustainability. They're a B Corp as well as a member of the 1% for the planet. This means donating 1% of all sales to environmental causes that protect the planet because collective action adds up. So buying their products means you're supporting the planet too. Visit 1%fortheplanet.org to learn more. Hi, and thanks for joining us on another episode of The Wellness Breakdown. This week on the podcast, we wanted to take a look at adrenal health. Yeah, we we thought we'd take this topic because it is one that has been, I guess, talked around a lot more Mm. in mainstream media. There's a lot of misconceptions around it, and it is pivotal to our stress response. And let's be honest, guys, who's not stressed? (laughs) So we thought we'd take this one on this week. The adrenals are tiny glands. I mean, they're almost like um, walnut size, they sit above the kidneys and they actually have a really crucial role in how we manage our stress response. They're part of something called the HPA axes, which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, bit of a mouthful. <laughs> um, and that is how the brain and the endocrine system, so the nervous system and the endocrine system kind of link up together. So when we have a perceived stress in our either psychological or physiological stress, our body mounts a stress response and that's where the adrenals will produce certain hormones. So things like cortisol is the one that's kind of most used, but it, you know, things like epinephrine and norepinephrine. So these are all kind of stress hormones, things like DHEA. So hormones that are often talked about in terms of stress, but also fertility and ageing. When we talk about adrenals, we're talking about the fact that they help, they do help to regulate lots of things like your immune, your metabolism, blood pressure. They have a huge impact on everything. Um, uh, I think that the thing where they get battered the most is through our stress response. And I think cortisol is quite a a woolly term, really. Like people kind of automatically assume that to be producing cortisol is kind of a bad thing, a bit like stress, really, like stress is inherently bad. But actually, as we know, that stress is crucial for our survival, really, Mm -hmm. and a little bit of stress, particularly, um, you know, things like the hormetic stressors that I know you 
talk a lot about those are kind of positive micro stresses so something like exercise for instance could be perceived as a positive stress because we are stressing the body but then in that we have that kind of healing response um so I think people often think about cortisol and have like like a negative connotation with it but it is like really really important it's actually anti-inflammatory until and here's the crucial part, mm-hmm. until we start producing shite loads of it mm-hmm. chronically. And so we never move out of that kind of, essentially the survival response, that fight or flight response into the more, what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's conducive to kind of regulating a lot of, or pretty much every process in the body, you know, things like metabolism, immune system functioning, gut health. I mean, you could even say like cognition, really. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really true. Cortisol gets a real has a negative connotation but it is an incredible hormone and our stress response is there to keep us safe it literally is there to save our lives so when the body thinks that it's under stress it produces cortisol which physiologically means that we have blood flowing to our limbs and to our brain so that we can think fast and move fast say a car comes around the corner really fast you jump out the road your body will react faster than your brain can react. Your cortisol response will kick in super fast and it saves you. It means you move and you think really fast. The problem is that when you're sitting at your computer and you get a shitty email from your bank, the body thinks the same thing. And so then you, and, and if you think about how many, how much time we spend, actually it doesn't even have to be a shitty email, sitting in front of your computer all day, rushing, rushing, rushing to do stuff, always having a list as long as your arm of things to do and running around all day and not resting at all. Your body probably sits in that cortisol state most of the day. And that is where you get your adrenals get exhausted or tired, fatigued, insufficient. <laughs> That's really where the issue lies, I would say a lot of the time when we talk about stress and how we support our clients it's really focused predominantly on the adrenals but I kind of think the brain kind of gets like almost like overlooked in a way like we all want this we all want like a quick fix we're like what herb or what Mm -hmm. supplement is going to fix my adrenals and it's like actually you might need to think about what's going on from like a more kind of psychosocial or it could even be an internal physiological stress that's causing that response in the brain which is then obviously being um the cortisol is being output in the adrenals yeah so i think again it's always multifactorial isn't it you know yeah you know we have these neural pathways and if we're firing at that if we're firing them all the time and i suppose things like for example scrolling on your phone you know constantly there's um there was a study done showing how addictive phones are and just picking them up you get a little adrenaline shot and so I suppose we have all these, we sound like an old woman, modern day technologies that mean that we're constantly, that that you're right, that that hypothalamus is constantly being triggered. And that in turn is mm-hmm. causing a bit of dysregulation to the rest of the body. No, 100%. And then you add on, like our lifestyles are inherently for a lot of us as a kind of... Uh, response to this mounting stress then we have a lot of physical things that then almost feed back into that stress loop so we might eat like lots of foods that spike our insulin level so we don't have good blood sugar regulation and we know that can also impact on the adrenals and trigger that stress response or if somebody's got you know a lot of gut inflammation for instance and that can come from a highly processed diet even you know if from physical level like what you put on your skin what toxins of toxins what chemicals you're absorbing you know all of those things that you come into it's sort of like a full-on 360 bombardment of stressors on the body and also just thinking a little bit more about if you are in this sympathetic nervous state the majority of the time when you you literally aren't in a rest and digest so you know that's why eating on the go is not so good that's why people have trouble in my experience of losing weight when they're very very stressed they are the people who can be doing everything right they're like i get up at six i take a cold shower i go for a run i walk the dog i do some yoga i meditate um why am i feeling very stuck and the reason is because they might be doing doing all those things but they're not actually taking time to you know they're they're just ticking boxes yeah, with the kind of uh, the weight side of things, I think that's a really interesting one because it kind of goes against what a lot of people are being told. It's like, you know, exercise loads and the harder, the faster, the better. For a lot of people, they might calorie, like quite severely calorie restrict. And actually what that does is feed back into that stress loop in a lot of ways. And 
we know that one of the side effects of you know chronically raised cortisol is that it does tend to uh, cause this middle weight gain so yeah. weight around the tummy area so that's something that somebody's going actually yeah that's where my weight kind of sits you it might be worth thinking about thinking about the stress side of things rather than actually what you're doing she you might be eating really healthily and you might be over, like exercising and actually just get really frustrated yeah um i mean the other symptoms i suppose that come with adrenals are things like uh you can have issues with your thyroid you can have issues with um thinning hair dermatitis um also there, there are quite a lot of issues that you can have rather than just feeling stressed out that come from um an overactive sympathetic nervous response yeah totally and I think if we're going to be really honest like just focus and we're talking about adrenals here today but I think a lot of the time a lot of those other things get neglected like gut health even you know one of the criteria for like IBS is um is stress yeah so it's so much more complex don't you think yes it definitely is you know even talking about the immune system when you think about stress if you're somebody who goes on holiday and gets sick, it's probably because you're very stressed because the cortisol will stop your immune system doing what it needs to do until you relax. And how many times have I heard people going, oh, I've went, every time I go on holiday, I get sick. And I'm like, mm, yeah, it's probably less to do with going on holiday and more to do with the fact that you're stressed out of your mind. And the minute you let go of that, yeah. your body goes, okay, now it's okay. Now I can be, now I'm, now it's safe for me to be unwell and not on form. Thinking about what we do in clinic or the testing that you can do, I think for me, and I'm sure you probably agree, is there's something called an adrenal stress test, which is the saliva test. And it's a really good one because you take it four times throughout the day. And so you can see where your cortisol level is at throughout the day. It should be high in the morning. It wakes you up and then it should slowly peter out during or go, you know, decline during the day so that you're really nice and tired, ready for bed at 10 o'clock. It doesn't, I don't think I've ever seen an address, uh, adrenal stress test come back that looks like that. I'm sure you use a Dutch test as yeah. well, Rose. It's just inordinately more expensive yeah. than yeah. a saliva test. It's like three times the price. But in that one, you do a combination of saliva and urine, mm -hmm. um, typically. And that will tell us like what is how, how cortisol is essentially being used. Because I have seen people that I know <laughs> are stressed and we do a stress test and it comes back fairly normal and I'm like there's no way that's accurate I I've ever and seen then a normal doing... test I honestly can say well you know what I mean like we're all I mean we're all kind of yeah jittering above or beyond that yeah, yeah, unless yeah. you're in proper like you, you know adrenals are literally flatlining which actually was how I when I was in fashion I've never seen a test like that in any of my clients but I did it when I before I even qualified and it was literally like right at the bottom how long did you take to get back on track after that, Eve? I mean, in all honesty, I, I guess it's you have to remove the major stressor, mm. which for me was my job. So in all, I didn't actually really start my recovery until I until I left. And I appreciate that's not everybody's, you it's know, people possible, are not necessarily yeah. able to do that. But I think it for me, it was like I literally had no choice in the end of it. So I did then leave, but I'd had a, a long history with antibiotics as, on top of it. So my gut was absolutely destroyed. Mm. Again, thinking about how do you build up the adrenals, it was that I had to also build up my gut because my gut was influencing my adrenals. It was so inflamed and so out of balance and out of whack. And that was then having a knock-on effect to things like how well I was absorbing nutrients from my food, which was also causing more stress for my body. So I had to really think about what were the psychosocial factors, which for me was a lot was my job. But it is, it's also about acknowledging the things that are causing it. So like if somebody honestly says to you, and I'm quite honest with my clients, I'll say, look, that is not sustainable. That level of pressure, that level of work that you're under, this chronic no sleeping. But if they're not acknowledging that, like, that obviously that's either going to completely hinder their process or at least slow it down. Like you, I don't mess around anymore. I'm like, you need to stop doing that hit class every morning at 6am. Okay, if you can't change your job, which of course most people can't, then how can we help you in it? And doing things like, I, you know, I'm like, I want you to meditate every day. I find it hard. I know you'll find it hard, but I just want you to do it. I want you to learn to breathe properly. I want you to go for a walk at lunchtime. Lifestyle things like that, that can make a huge difference. 
I mean, there are, I had a client the other day who's decided to take a sabbatical because she is so, she, she has, it's dawned on her how unwell she feels because of her job. And there is definitely more talk around um, work, like well-being in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And I think employers are being generally seem, anyway, they're appearing to be more responsible around it. So even if it's like you can't necessarily leave your job, maybe you can put boundaries in. Um, maybe you can take, like you said, like sabbaticals or there's a fantastic book called When the Body Says No by Dr. Gabor Mate. Mm-hmm. And, and it is that. And it's like these these stories which are, I feel really empowering. Some, I mean, I think it's quite divisive for some people. They can f- find it sli- slightly blamey, but I, I, I think it's actually mm-hmm. really quite empowering. But the book basically talks about that and it talks about how we ignore the, the signals our body gives us because we are under so much duress from yeah. a stress perspective and then that's when we get the physical ailments that come along there's very few clients that i'd say that are really pushed in terms of stress that are not eating a you know pretty like healthy diet but it's more the kind of the add-on stuff it's more the kind of like exercise the type of exercise they're doing relentless exercising too much fasting actually yeah um, we could talk a bit about that yeah. um also things just like sleep like almost having FOMO about going to bed like you know they're just like up until two o'clock in the morning I'm like honestly what the hell are you doing until two o'clock in the morning <laughs> go to bed. if I have to stay up later than like 10 30 I'm like well, that's a late night um <laughs> But it's just, well, you and I love a nine thirty bedtime, don't we, Rose? Nine thirty bedtime, but I also like four thirty yeah. bedtime, and then I can feel that for days and days and days. Um, <laughs> I think uh, and that's four thirty in the morning. Just to be clear, I'm not going to bed in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> Although my although my husband does say he's like one day you're just going to be going to bed before you've got up on that, um, but yeah it's true we should talk about fasting and hermetic stress we should touch on because hermetic stress I guess is the easiest ones are things like cold therapy hot therapy fasting and a hip class or you know something quite or a run or something like that and what what the the premise of it is that it adds a bit of challenge to the body and so the body has to rally and that in turn creates more resilience and strength. Which is true and it's great and fantastic. But the caveat, and it's a massive one because most people are very stressed, is that if you are very, very stressed and you are that person who's doing their cold shower and doing their hip class, then it's literally putting fire on fire. And this is where it gets difficult, I think, in clinic when you're talking to a person who is hell bent on doing everything that's supposed to be good for you, but not looking at their actual unique picture, which is one of somebody who's quite, you know, got quite a lot of adrenal dysfunction. And what they should be doing is taking a nice warm bath, reading a book, going to bed and doing thinking about three months of R&R and taking care of themselves. Um, so, you know, fasting is something that I, you know, intermittent fasting is great. I think we both are pretty much on the same page that you can do just as much good with a 12 hour clear window mm-hmm. as you can with, uh, you know, 14 hour, clear, you know, 14 hour fast. Um, but then typically I would say, and again, stereotypically, you know, the p- people who are highly stressed individuals tend to be the ones who go I only eat for one hour a day I just have you know and they push it the more is more and actually that again is putting fire on fire and then you start into into um you know interrupting the thyroid and causing issues there totally I mean actually I've got a quite funny client story to say about so quite a famous presenter actually he was looking to lose weight and he was you know I said look I think we should do a dutch test so we did the dutch test and he was incredibly stressed out and I said you know and I said that you know you're just you're fasting too long he was fasting like more than 16 8 I can't remember exactly what it was and he was like oh my god I've been fasting like a bastard all these years and all I've been doing is piling on the weight <laughs> and literally go. as soon as we started ha- him having breakfast that it lit the weight just came off without any real yeah. kind of effort in a way I guess we should also talk about in this whole thing about stress eating, like nibbling mindlessly. There's nothing intentional about it at all. And we've all done it where yeah. you just grab something and you're just literally not even aware of what you're doing. I would also say booze is a big one. It's a trigger. Stress is a trigger for, you know, reaching for booze. Because yeah. it's like, it, it's that, it, again, it's hitting a dopamine problem, isn't it? It's like, you yeah, know. definitely. Because people are like, oh, it's just willpower. It's just because I'm stressed. It's my brain telling me I need something because I'm so stressed. It's like, well, well can't, I mean, yeah, there's obviously a bit of that going on. But then there is also this like very kind of um, 
like dance between like insulin and cortisol mm. as well. So when you're chronically stressed, you're pr- producing a lot of cortisol, that's going to wreak havoc with insulin and the kind of balance of insulin. So actually there's a, a physical need to then eat, particularly high sugar or high, dense carbohydrate snacks. So there is a whole kind of physiological thing mm. that happens there. But then again, with cortisol being high, and as we mentioned at the start, you're eating lots of these foods, particularly the real dense calorific ones, which is the ones we typically want when we're stressed, that then gets stored immediately on that middle area because it's storing storing energy for when to keep running. So yeah. there is like a, a survival thing that, that goes on because I think that's really important for people to know because sometimes I feel like it's just people can be really hard on themselves and be like, oh, it's just me, I lack willpower. But I'm a bit like actually... Maybe you just need to, like Rose said, go and have some rest and relaxation and then you probably would find you don't yeah. necessarily need to, to do the stress eating. But it's a bigger picture thing. There's actually it's feeding into these phys- physiological things that are happening as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's true. And also if you're tired, because, you know, if you're tired because you're stressed and you're not sleeping very much, then that's another trigger as well for for the body to be like, feed me, feed me something that, yeah. you know, that's going to fuel me. But then you tend to root for the wrong thing. But if you do take a few deep breaths, it gives you a second to make a different de- different decision or to get a little bit better, a little bit more perspective on a situation. Yeah, just do some deep breathing. So box breathing is one of the most easy techniques to do where mm. you breathe in for a count of four, hold the breath for four, breathe out on a count of four and hold it on empty for four. And like you visualise a box because a lot of people that have busy minds feel like they can't. I think they think that meditation is about emptying your mind. It's actually not, to be honest. It's about allowing the thoughts to come in and just as and when. We know that that acutely, in an acute moment, moves the body from the sympathetic into the parasympathetic, yeah. which means that, like you said, you're not in that hypervigilant. You're not making decisions in that hypervigilant state. I guess we've talked a bit, a little bit about not necessarily, if you're very stressed out, leaving two gaps, two long gaps between meals can yeah. have a negative impact. So... And that helps to balance blood sugar levels. So roughly, again, everybody's different, but like four to five hours between meals. I often actually ask clients to add in an intentional snack in the afternoon. And the reason why I do that is that it does help balance blood sugar levels, but it also then helps to mitigate some of the haphazard snacking. Yeah, I call them mini meals and I'm like, choose it so it doesn't choose you because four o'clock in the afternoon is when that cake chooses you and before you know it you've eaten the whole bloody thing and actually if you've chosen it you might choose a slightly more nutritious option and also you don't get to that point where you're starving and then making the wrong decisions yeah and also if you're somebody that does have tends to wake up in the middle of the night a small carbohydrate carbohydrate rich snack before you go to bed can help to stabilize cortisol through the evening so something like it could be like a date with some nut butter in it or something like that um can help with that so mm. that's another kind of tip thrown in there do you know then, that that sort of thing makes me twitch because i know when i say to someone to date they don't eat one they eat seven and i love dates but they well are. i guess you have to be really prescriptive <laughs> oh, about it don't you no, i, I didn't me, say you but, can um, eat all the dates um, <laughs> <laughs> And then I suppose that, I mean, we should, we should talk about booze and we should talk about coffee. I mean, coffee, when I, when people talk about coffee not being great is when people are using it to stimulate their adrenal glands. So if you're very tired in the afternoon, you're like, I'm actually on my knees and you have a, you know, strong coffee to get you going. That's stimulating your adrenal glands and stimulating adrenaline and potentially not the best thing you can do for those adrenal glands that might be saying we're a bit tired now. Yeah. And then booze, well, booze is just. It's quite stressful on every day, unfortunately. Well, a little bit of it, obviously, people use it as a downer, really, mm. to, like, you know, help to de-stress. But there are a few things that the adrenals typically don't like, and that is a lot of alcohol and caffeine and high amounts of sugar, which we've obviously t- touched on the sugar part. I mean, I even take clients completely off caffeine sometimes if they're really stressed, which mm. obviously goes down like a lead balloon, <laughs> yeah. um, especially when I'm saying don't also don't drink alcohol <laughs> for a bit. Um, but no, it's again, it's about moderating one's relationship with it. Because if you are using alcohol to relax, that's the issue. It's not even like the alcohol per se, but like using it in that way, then it's it is becomes more of a drug really yeah so yeah it's definitely something to be mindful of and 
minimize really if you're using that a lot um and then I just wanted to come back to the food side of things. So I think it's really important to talk about having sufficient dietary fat in the diet. All of our kind of um, hormones really depend on that. There is some research, mm-hmm. I think, around omega-3s and yeah. they're, that they can help with moderating, this better moderating the stress response. So that you find in all the oily fish. So mackerel, salmon, pilchard, sardines, mm-hmm. anchovies. You could supplement omega-3 too, but it's better to get it from the food source because then you have all the cofactors working that help you absorb it even if you are having oily fish you know when you're looking at something where you need extra help that's where supplements are Mm. are, you know i think are game changing you know because you're talking about a therapeutic dose there aren't you rose yeah 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 exactly and i mean i also i just wanted to comment on one called phosphatidylserine so when we were talking earlier about that surge at night that second wind which is supposed to be so great but actually it's just your cortisol rising when it's meant to be going to bed um when you went to be going to bed it is um brilliant at dumbing that, that down a bit and blunting that res- that cortisol yeah. res- surge at the end of the day so i think if that's something you suffer from it's definitely worth trying um and also b vitamins if you are supremely stressed a b complex is no bad thing because stress will zap your b profile and it's also very good for energy production or you could just have some really good quality grass-fed meat because that would give you a lot of b vitamins and things like zinc because zinc is also used up a lot on my stress the other one that i would add in would be magnesium because that's Mm -hmm. really important in terms of the relaxing response in the nervous system and another one that we use up in droves when Mm -hmm. we are chronically stressed and then, I mean, there are certain herbs that people use. Yeah, adaptions. Um, I know ashwagandha yeah. mm-hmm, is a big one. Rhodiola. And licorice I, roots. Yeah, and rhodiola for men particularly. But again, I think these things are great as like, or can be great as add-ons, but unless you deal with the stressors, yeah. they're almost irrelevant. It's like a yeah. sticky plaster thing. So, I'm, I, you know... I don't want to be like misleading anyone here. And even with my clients, it's like, well, I'll give you the ashwagandha and rhodiola supplement, but unless you get to bed a bit earlier, nothing's going to happen. Like it's not a magic pill. I would also say like, if you're somebody that suffers from IBS or you have a lot of gut symptoms, you also need to be thinking about your gut health because that is really important in terms of moderating that stress response as well. So plenty of fiber in the diet, coming back to the food side of things, lots of vegetables, leafy greens in particular, um, are fantastic because they're packed with B vitamins and magnesium mm-hmm. uh, so you can get some nice add-ons there so yeah um, so you might think about if there is gut dysbiosis it could be useful potentially a probiotic just because there's loads of research now around the gut brain connection and how that impacts on that stress response but to be honest rather than just chucking a load of supplements at it I would be I really would recommend you go and see a practitioner that can help you navigate this better and give you the things that you need but if some of the things that we've been mentioning are like massive red flags like oh yeah I definitely do all the hip classes and I don't do anything to like counterbalance that and yeah I'm definitely stress eating and I'm not mindful eating at all like those are things the basics we a lot of us are not doing I mean I'll put my hands up I don't do that all the time Mm. either so Sometimes we can rem- we can get really carried away with like all this. Oh, that's a nice like licorice root, lovely sounding <laughs> supplement, and actually forget about the fact that we're not really taking a break in our working day, and we're not prioritizing yeah. our sleep, and we're not sitting down to and eat all that stuff. Yes, and also I would add in as a last final point, if somebody their stress comes from a lot of emotional triggers or traumas that's where things like talking therapy can be really amazing and that's something now that I do think that like your GP will be really they're they're a lot more open to that and a lot more referrals are going out to like counsellors and stuff like that so um don't be afraid to ask for that too because that can be a major one well it has been a total joy I love that episode um me too (laughs) So subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below. We're also available to listen wherever you get your podcasts. So if you've enjoyed the podcast, please share an episode with your friends and email us at info at thewellnessbreakdown.co.uk or message us on our Instagram. See you next week. See you then.